Oh, hello there. My name's Chris. This is Axiom Patriot Channel. You just caught me perusing my innermost thoughts about Murphy's Law, a 1986 release starring my boyfriend Charles Bronson. This is Axiom Patriot Channel. I'm in front of the old abandoned Kino rack. Kino Lorber sent me this glorious high definition Blu ray disc for review. So maybe you've heard of a little company called Canon Group Inc. They released this in 1986. And uh, like I said, my boyfriend Charles Bronson and his co-star in this is Kathleen Wilhoyt, is that how you say your name? She, uh, she actually does an audio commentary on this with film historian Nick Redman. Uh, the other special feature, since I just went there, is Lion's Law, the canon years, interview with actor Robert F. Lyons, and two radio spots and theatrical trailer. Uh, I have not yet heard the commentary on this, but I'm going to be listening to it because uh, I want to hear what this chick has to say about working with Charles Bronson. I know a lot of people uh, don't have very nice things to say about working with him, but let's see what she says. This is not a very good picture of her, but uh, my husband thought that she was kind of hot in this movie. I don't know. So this does have the slip treatment, you know, same artwork, and there's nothing fantastic inside. Just the disc. This film's a cool hundo minutes, English subtitles, and it's only region A, so sorry about that, but uh, I'm gonna give a brief plot summary. No spoilers. The movie starts with this chick, Kathleen. Her name in this is McCoy, something McCoy, Arabella McCoy, I believe. I'm like, that's kind of strange. And that's what Charles Bronson said too. He's like, Arabella, what the hell? So Charles Bronson is walking back to his car with a bag of groceries. This chick is breaking into his car. She's in the process of it and uh, you know, she like takes off in his car and she wrecks his car into some restaurant and he proceeds to pursue her on foot. We learn very soon that he's a cop and so does she. We find out very, very early that McCoy has a potty mouth for sure. One of the first things that she says to Charles Bronson's character, Jack Murphy, is uh, how come all cops have two inch peckers? It's a good question. So then we're waking up with Jack. It's looking pretty crummy in his bachelor pad and uh, very, very dirty. Not really the most, uh, you know, neat man in the world. So he like rolls out of bed and has to go into some, I guess, crime scene. There is like a dead hooker in the tunnel of love. This kind of sets up the backstory on the crime scene near the hooker, not on the dead hooker, but he finds this like pen pendant. He finds this pendant and uh, he knows it belongs to Tony Vincenzo, who obviously is in the mob. Murphy goes to this restaurant looking for Vincenzo to serve this warrant. He finds his brother there, the, the pimp's brother, eating dinner with his mom and uh, he's like, hey, where's your brother? I don't know where he is. And he's like, hey, we'll tell him I have a warrant for him. So the mob guy like threatens him at that point and says, hey, didn't you ever hear of Murphy's Law? Anything that can go wrong will. And that's when Jack Murphy just delivers one of the most badass lines ever. Jack Murphy. You remember that. Don't fuck with Jack Murphy indeed. Then we cut to this random smoking lady and um, like she has like blonde hair. She's meeting with a private investigator and he's like saying, oh, I'm gonna have to increase your price. She like puts a gun to his head and he's like, okay, okay, like no charge. And uh, you know, so we learn that she hired this PI and uh, then she just straight up shoots the guy right in the mouth. So we don't know who this chick is or what her story is, but then she calls Jack Murphy and says, I'm gonna kill you. And it's like, well, she obviously means business because she just shot the homeboy in his mouth. Then we have the whole mob story. We have uh, Vincenzo, the pimp, shows up at the airport and takes some stewardess hostage, like the cops show up, takes a stewardess hostage, kills her. So then Murphy is forced to shoot and kill him. So now the mob's all like, okay, killed the dude, killed my brother, you know you're you're just done then we're at the police station and one of jack murphy's co-workers says uh hey murphy saw your wife at the titty bar oh do, do her tits taste as good as they look and i'm like i don't know how clever that remark was but jack murphy wasn't impressed by it at all so uh, he slugged the guy we learned that there's animosity down at the station between the boys the police chief like pulls murphy and is like hey what's wrong with you don't you know that like three-fourths of the force are divorced like you know, this isn't anything new. So 
then we learn that Jack Murphy's going through a new divorce and he's like a little touchy and a little, you know, drinky drinky because he's not used to being without his wife, who does in fact work down at the titty bar. The chief tells Murphy, you know, if you don't shape up, you're going to lose everything. So then Murphy proceeds to like, we just see this like, like degeneration of his life. He's drinking and stalking his ex-wife and uh, she's a topless dancer. He shows up at her work, like, you know, sitting there drinking and at first he's like, you think that he's like kind of cool with it. He just like w wants to be with her. And, uh, and then we see that he is like, well, he calls her a whore. Uh, Charles Bronson says whore very, very strangely. So he calls her a whore. So the bouncers kick him out of the club. He goes to his car and then somebody knocks him unconscious, I think with a gun. So um, he is now unconscious in his car and the person that knocked him out proceeds to wait, follows his ex-wife and her new boyfriend, the owner of the club, obviously, follows them to their house and then just shoots them cold. Whenever they get out of the car going into their house, just straight up shoots them and then uh, proceeds to drive Murphy's car back to his house, frames the dude for murder. Uh, that's what happens. One of the neighbors witnesses Murphy's car driving away from the crime scene, so he's taken into custody. Whenever he's taken in, he is handcuffed to the girl from the beginning that stole and wrecked his car. So now we have this dynamic duo. Murphy knows that he was framed and he believes it was the mob because he just killed the one dude, but uh, you know, the people that take him into custody are the cops that are not very nice with him and uh, so they're not doing him any favors. So Murphy takes things into his own hand as he breaks out of lockup uh, and in doing so he has to take McGee with him because they're unfortunately handcuffed together. He actually steals a police helicopter because he used to fly those in Korea. He crashes it into a pot farm and then he makes a run for it, uh, steals the, the pot farmer's truck and drives that to his former partner's house because he happens to live somewhere near there. There's a pretty intimate relationship that develops between Murphy and McGee, so that was pretty special. That happened at the cop's house. And um, as soon as we leave, somebody goes in and wouldn't you know they kill the cop. So it's like, okay, maybe this isn't totally having to do with the mob and Murphy. Maybe there's something else going on. That's the end of my play-by-play. -play. It gets pretty interesting once it gets towards the end. Murphy and McGee have some pretty tricky things that they pull to try to figure out some clues and do their own sleuthing, and it is very entertaining. The entire end sequence, there's like this big fight that happens at the Bradford building. Very historical, very cool looking building, very nice uh, location that they got there. That was interesting seeing how they used the architecture of the building and, and played that into the fight choreography. Some things that I really liked about this, I loved the Murphy was like the typical, you know, beaten down cop that's divorced and has a hard life and, you know, it, and I, I love that character. I love those types of movies and uh, he is so, so good at it. The character McGee is just like so whack. I love her. She's like a ball of energy and she just like starts spouting off these random insults like just some breath and, you know, like I don't even know. I like it. She just goes on and on and on insulting people. It's interesting because she gets into very compromising situations at a couple points in this movie and um, you know you learn that like her tough demeanor is not really you know she's a thief and stuff but you know she makes it clear she's not a whore and, uh, or a whore and um, you know she just she relies on Murphy a lot uh, and it's very very cute. Some of the schemes they come up with in this are also very very entertaining um, I love that it's like super easy to follow. It's a, like it, it's a straightforward story, but it's just entertaining as hell. So that is the review that I will submit to you for your consideration of Murphy's Law. It is overall just a super fun, action-packed cop movie with uh, mystery and vengeance and a little bit of love sprinkled on top. Many thanks to Kino Lorber for sending this to me for review check it out. Look for it on upcoming Kino sales and get down on it. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. Leave me a comment. Talk to me about Murphy's Law. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll be reviewing something next week. Come see what it is. And I will see you in